Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, great to be here this, this morning. Uh, very exciting time. Obviously, the Orange Blossom Classic is a staple here in South Florida, and we're excited once again to be a part of it. So I want to thank uh, my university president. I want to thank our athletic director, Vice President Tiffany Sykes, for um, supporting us in this endeavor. Uh, I'd like to thank Ms. Kendra Bullock uh, for putting this event on for the third year in a row, and uh, everyone who had a hand in making the Orange Blossom Classic uh, one of the biggest classics in black college football. And uh, again, two great programs. Um, you know, again, South Florida, sunny weather, Labor Day weekend. So what, what better place to be than down here uh, in the heartland of, of, of football uh, in this great state of Florida. So uh, just, again, thankful to, for the opportunity to be here today. Look forward to answering your questions. Uh, our football team has been here since yesterday. We're very excited. Uh, had our last practice this morning. And uh, we'll wind down a little bit, walk through tomorrow, and get ready to hopefully put on the show uh, Sunday at 3 o'clock. So thank you guys. And again, uh, look forward to your questions. OK. Well, uh, very similar circumstances. So when we assessed uh, the first two years in the Florida Classic, you know, we looked at uh, just not playing FAMU, a FAMU brand of football, um, turning the ball over, uh, uncharacteristic things on our behalf, giving up big plays, uh, personal fouls. Again, just let, allowing the game to be bigger than us. And uh, we looked back the, the first two years in this game, uh, very similar. And so for us, it, it's just about getting back to playing the style of football that we've come to know here at FAMU. Um, you know, stand true to our foundation, our seven Fs, and one of those is fundamentals. And so, you know, again, alignment, assignment, football. You know, playing through the whistle and uh, not not beating yourself. Good football teams don't beat themselves, and we find ourselves beating ourselves the last two years. And give credit to Jackson. Uh, again, that's the, they haven't lost a game or hadn't lost a game in conference play in two years, so they're a formidable opponent. But again, we assess ourselves and the things that we can control. Um, it's about doing those little things right. And so we're committed to doing that this year, and we think that'll give us a more favorable outcome. Well, obviously, the number one goal, uh, well, the number two goal, the first goal should be to graduate, which we're, we're proud to have 24 young men uh, that made the trip that will be playing this game with their college degree in hand. Uh, but the secondary goal is to make it to the NFL for a lot of these guys. And so we want to we wanna, uh, produce a program that shows that you can accomplish all of your goals here at Florida A&M. You, know, you can go to the number one public HBCU in America, uh, right on the verge of being a top 100 public institution nationally. You can play on national television, on ESPN. You can play in NFL venues. Um, you can make All-American, All-Conference, Player of the Year. And you can accomplish that ultimate goal of playing at the highest level. And we have three young men now that show that all of those things are possible. They're all college graduates. Um, they all got their degree from FAMU. And they're doing a great job representing Florida and them in the National Football League. So uh, again, they're, they're, they're a testament that all your goals can come true here. And that's a program that we were committed to building six years ago. And uh, we feel like we've done a pretty good job of that. Well, that's a huge part of it. You know, obviously, a game of this magnitude, you don't want any extra, uh, any distractions. You know, especially external distractions. And so, you know, that was a conversation that you know Vice President uh, Tiffany Sykes and I had when she first got here. You know, we we're committed to giving these young people the best uh, opportunity to be successful. And so, with the help of her team, uh, she didn't do it alone, but a great compliance staff, great academic support staff, um, we were able to get it done. And then everyone made the trip. Uh, there are no, no question marks. There are no guys flying in the day of the game and all, some of the things that we dealt with last year. And so it just gives us a chance to focus on the task at hand, preparing these guys mentally to go out there at 3 o'clock and play our best football. And so, again, that's what every, any program wants and, and the commitment from not only Dr. Robinson at the top, but, again, the, the vice president of, athlete, uh, of athletics, our provost, um, 
everybody who had a hand in making sure that we're able to function, not only just football, but all the sports that are playing right now. The certification process was so much better this year than years past. Uh, and again, hopefully we can do our part Sunday to show that all of that hard work is worth it and that we're able to go on the field and play the way we're capable of. Well, uh, you know, from Mar Marcus is a local guy, so he grew up right there in Tallahassee. I've been watching Marcus play football for a very long time. Uh, we wanted him coming out of high school. Uh, we weren't able to get him. You know, he's a four-star recruit, signed to the University of Louisville, uh, transferred out of Louisville, and we wanted him then. But being from Tallahassee, growing up on the south side, which is a rock's throw from FAMU's campus, uh, wasn't quite mature enough to come back home just yet. And so he went down the road uh, to the little school down in Daytona and uh, had a great career there and got his degree and decided that he was finally ready to come back to the highest of Seven Hills. And so just excited about his potential. Uh, he's a phenomenal football player. He's the first guy the NFL scouts ask about when they come to campus. Really, really fast, um, tough young man, uh, versatile. I mean, played play quarterback in high school. So you, know, you may see him back there taking some snaps every now and then. But just a great young man. And he, he's one of many that we've identified through the transfer portal. So we want to make sure we bring the right type of young men to campus, not just grabbing a guy because he comes from a Power 5 program. We have players from the portal from Division II programs, um, other FCS programs, and they're all contributing in a major way. And I think it's important that you build your roster the right way and put the right pieces in place. And Marcus Riley is definitely one of those pieces. Well, you know, there's an old saying that, that if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. And so even though last year's game is just that last year's game, different football teams, uh, different circumstances, we want to take the lessons that we've learned from not only that game, but any game that we play. We take lessons from wins, from losses, uh, from every day at practice. I mean, that's a part of growth. And so we, we can't ever get to a place where we're complacent and that we're satisfied with where we are. You know, every day is an opportunity. I practiced this morning. There are things to learn from what we just did an hour ago. So when we get back and watch the film, we'll make the corrections and get better. I think that's a staple in life, that you never get satisfied, that you always are striving to do more, to do better. And you know, every opportunity is, is a chance to do that. So thank, we're thankful for this opportunity. You know, if, if our last football game was Orange Blossom Classic of 2022, uh, you know, we'd probably have a reason to hang our heads low. But we get another opportunity today, or uh, Sunday, to, to start our season the way that we want it to be started. And, and you know, right now we control our own destiny, and we talk long and hard with our football team about making sure it stays that way. Lawrence Goss, ESPN, The Escape. Um, with Van you know, historic you know, time in the Orange Blossom Classic, in the Orange Blossom Classic you know, does it mean anything for you and for the team specifically, you know, knowing that currently standing, this, this could potentially be the last um, Van you participation in the game? Well, you know, our main focus is making sure that we do what we need to do to position ourselves for success in 2023. <laughs> you know, that's the main, that's the main thing. Uh, we're thankful for the Orange Blossom Classic. We're thankful for being a part of its history. You know, but just like Florida and them football went on after the Classic ended, I'm sure the, the Orange Blossom Classic will go on uh, once Florida and them is, no, is, is not in the game. You know, so if this is the last time we're playing in it in a year, two years, who knows when that'll be. Uh, we want to make sure that we represent Florida and them the right way. And we know that South Florida is, is one of our staples as far as recruiting, not just athletes, but students in general. And we'll still continue to have a footprint in South Florida. I mean, that, that would never change. FAMU fans will still come to the Orange Blossom Classic, I'm sure. You know, it's a part of our history. And so we're just thankful that, you know, the two are kind of synonymous, even though they are two separate entities. They're kind of synonymous because of our longstanding history with the game. Uh, but our focus is what we can do in 2023 to make sure that we're successful. And then moving forward, we'll, we'll address that when the time comes. Well, I mean, a win will mean that we're uh, ahead of the swag east, and that's the main thing, right? Now, there's some other things that winning will do. We have a rabid fan base. Uh, we brag different. And so that's 365 days of bragging rights 
uh, you know, versus Jackson State fans who are pretty rabid themselves. And so a win does a lot. But as far as our football program, our focus is on doing what we need to do to make sure that we're on top of the swag each standings after week one. And again, if you, if you start looking at too many other things, you can get distracted and put too much unadded pressure on yourself. For us, we know what we're here. Uh, it's a business trip, and our goal is to be 1-0. Well, not only that, but it also dawns on me that Nathaniel Trash Powell, who our field house is named after, was the first black to score a touchdown in the Orange Bowl. And so, again, the history behind this game means the world to us. And that's one of the, one of the true benefits to being a head coach at a place like FAMU. Every day you're a part of this rich history. When you walk to that field house and you look up, you see all the championships, you see the coaches' names. And the fact that my name is even mentioned with a, a, a Jay Gaither, a Rudy Hubbard, a Ken Riley, a Billy Joe, uh, is a blessing. And so every day is my job to make sure that I make those guys proud and I make Rattler Nation proud. But again, the history behind this game is second to none. And uh, our football team definitely understands that and we're definitely blessed to be a part of it. Well, if you look at our roster, uh, the, the, the largest amount of players is from South Florida. And so whether that's Miami, Broward County, uh, we obviously want to make sure that we keep our footprint down here. This is the heartland of high school football. The most talent in America in one place is right here in South Florida. And that's why you see every coach in America, every program in America recruiting this place. And so we want to make sure we continue that. Um, having Coach Rowe for uh, the last five years has been a huge part of that. Obviously, he retired. and he's, you know, he's enjoying a little bit of golf right now. I'm sure he'll be here at the game. Uh, but again, just making sure that we keep a footprint. Coach James Cozy on our staff is from, is from Miami. And uh, you know, so again, we have a ton of players. Uh, guys that you'll see tomorrow making plays, Eric Smith, you know, from Northern High School, Winston Frazier, Northwestern. Um, I, I start naming them off, we'll be here all day, but I think over 20 players on our football team uh, are from South Florida. And so uh, it, it's great for them to be here. You know, Jalen Howard, as you alluded to, uh, is a guy that, that has a bright future. He's still a young guy, but has a really bright future. We'll play some tomorrow on special teams. But uh, again, if, if you're a smart football coach, you better have more than one coach in South Florida. It's too many schools, too many good players uh, to just have one coach. So we got about three that are coming through South Florida to make sure that we continue to bring the best and the brightest to the highest of Seven Hills. Uh, Jeff Fox, Remix Sports again. Um, you guys, the so-called prognosticators, are really expecting a lot out of your football team. You mentioned it being a business trip. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little more? How do you keep them ready? <laughs> Well, uh, definitely won't do as much as we've done in the past. You know, we came down earlier last year and allowed the guys some time to unwind and go to the beach and, you know, just kind of kick back a little bit. Well, not this year, you know. So we're not leaving the hotel unless we're practicing um, or unless we're going somewhere to eat or do functions that Orange Blossom Classic puts on. So, you know, we want our guys. We have a lot of guys who have never experienced Orange Blossom Classic. Uh, we have a lot of guys who have never really been to South Florida. And so we want to make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing and that's by locking them in to what we have to do. And I think we'll do a better job of that this year. All hands are on deck. Uh, we, you know, we'll have some designated time where our South Florida parents can come by and see the, see the young men and hug them. And that's about all they'll have time to do. They'll give them a hug, uh, put, put a couple of dollars in their pockets, and then they'll, be able to, they'll go on their way. But again, just making sure the guys understand why we're here and what we're charged to do. And, and again, when you're in a place like South Florida, the distractions are all around you. So you know, again, we got about 100 security guards manning the hotels and make sure that uh, that we're doing the right things. That's a lot of great parties, man. They go to Minnesota. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that, that's part of it. The biggest party would be in the locker room on Sunday about 6 o'clock, and all y'all will miss that one. So it, it's a trade-off. Well, fortunately for us, uh, you know, we have a great, obviously, response team. 
the moment we knew that Adelia was was down in the Gulf, uh, we started planning. And so, you know, we canceled classes for the rest of the week. Um, but thankfully, we were able to get back onto the practice field and not lose a day. And uh, the, the, the storm hit east, far enough east of us that it didn't affect us. I mean, our heart does go out to the, the people of Perry County, I mean, Taylor County, Madison County, you know, all of those areas that the hurricane really did hit heavily. And a lot of our players and coaches are from those areas. So definitely wanted to make sure we gave them time to check on their families, make sure everyone was safe. Uh, but thankfully, we were able to get back and resume activities. And then it didn't interrupt our travel uh, schedule as well. One more question. Well, no, I think those networks are overdue at, at coming to FAMU. Uh, we've had a big, we had, we've had the largest brand for a very, very long time. And the nation knows about us, who we are. And people want to see FAMU on TV. They want to see the Marching 100. They want to see our football program. They want to learn about our academic programs. And I think uh, major networks uh, need to see that and hear that and, and, and put us on TV. Because again, there's a student out on the West Coast that wants to be a business major and will realize that we have one of the top business schools in America. And, and they can come to FAMU and go be great. Uh, we have some engineers out there that, that, that want to come to the Deep South and become an engineer. And we have one of the top engineering schools in America, a pharmacist, you know, an educator, you name it, communications. Our, our very own Tiffany Green will be announcing the game, um, a product of our uh, School of Journalism and Graphic Communications. So again, it's not time for us to get on TV. It's time for TV to come find FAMU and, and, and want to get us on those networks.